Hello and welcome guys, I hope you all are well. We're back with another bite-sized breakdown today. We're taking a little look at a round from G2 Esports versus Ninjas in Pajamas group game from Blast Pro Series. This is the final map and we are checking out the pistol round. So we'll just pop straight into this and we can already see that this is a relatively interesting setup, particularly from G2 Esports. I can't say I've seen a setup quite like this on an Inferno pistol round from the CTs. They've got Hunter and Jack set up in apartments, essentially waiting for a balcony play. And then we've got three over towards B. Now, what it looks like G2 Esports' intention is here, seems like they've got some sort of anti-strat prepared, some sort of read on what ninjas like to do on their T-side pistol on Inferno. It looks like they were expecting some sort of A split. And the intention was to have two players in apartments kind of cut off one arm of that split. And then turn around and focus on a site where nexa with his kit will come from b and they will perform a retake on a obviously if the play comes to b they've got three on in for on banana that's more than enough to fight get some kills and hope to stop a banana take now what actually happens here and this is uh, a really really interesting and a really really cool pistol strap from nip as you can see, NIP are set up with two HE grenades. They've got one on liners and they've got one on Plopsky. Now, this seems to be, to me, a read from the ninjas that the setup is going to be like it is from G2 Esports. Now, if we just play this out, as they come barreling up Banana, they open with the two grenades and those two grenades clean out basically the entire B defense. Honestly, at this point, the round is like 90% done in NIP's favor. It's absolutely wild that they bought two grenades and got so much mileage out of those two grenades. Honestly, really, really cool strat. Absolutely love to see it. Now, one thing I do want to emphasize here, because this is the next key point in the round. Amanek does really, really, really well to get two people. And obviously, as you saw there, just as he gets those two people, a nade that was thrown from one of the banana players actually lands on their head. So let's just go back and make sure that we, we catch that. There you go. You can see the nade literally just came over from one of the guys that died. It's chilling just here above Plopsky's head. And that is going to do tons of damage. And Amanek actually gets two kills on two of the players that were less damaged by that grenade. Amanek's two kills here are absolutely vital. There is no way that this retake happens. There's no way that G2 can try and even get back in this round if, Am if Amanek goes down for free. The fact that he gets two kills and turns it from a 5v3, what should have probably been like a 4v2, maybe he gets one and dies, it's actually now a 3v2 and very, very doable considering low HP on a couple of NIP's players, particularly Plopsky, who's not even got any armor. So like one chest short, maybe two is taking him down when he's on 45 hp and as you can see he goes down here now as we can see here nip have set up some standard smokes they've smoked off graveyard and they've smoked off ct very very standard in this sort of rounds and they set up a little crossfire they have the two low hp players towards dark res is going to take the initial contact with that usp at range try and get a kill try and get some damage and bait for plopsky i assume plopsky is just going to sit in emo or dark whatever you call it I'm assuming he's just going to tuck in that corner, let Rez die, and then make a play based off of that. Basically, they're going to try and make Hunter and Jax think that there's nobody else there when there is. And then uh, Linus is obviously going to play the crossfire from Banana. So I just want to make another point. At this point, the round is heavily in NIP's favor here. As you can see, the bomb is already ticked down 10 seconds. There is a kit somewhere. Nexa had a kit, so there's a kit towards the top of Banana that G2 can pick up. But this is definitely an NIP favorite round still at this point pretty heavily. They've got a great crossfire set up. Time's already ticked on the bomb. They have every advantage here. Now, what we're going to see is we see Jack set up a little flashbang. It doesn't blind anyone or anything. Now, here's the first fight. I think Rez, I'll be honest, I think he overextends here. I don't even know why he's moved to the pillar angle. I'm not really sure why he didn't just stay on the emo angle. I think he needs to make Jackson Hunter waste more time closing the gap on him. The fact that he kind of puts himself out in the open here, like as we can see here, he's going to basically come across this angle. And then like if we look how far out in the open Jax actually is, hang on, uh, Rez, sorry, actually is. Like he's actually quite far out in the open here. I know he's trying to get some information on Graveyard, 
and the reason that he's having to get information on graveyard is because of this smoke that's been set up in banana so that smoke that jacks through from ct is actually very very key in this retake not only does it cut off linus from being able to help for the first portion of the retake he's going to have to push through that smoke do something risky in order to help crossfire with his teammates but it also forces res to get the information that has now been lost on graveyard on the flip side i think i'd rather res just didn't go for it he's so low i think he needs to make hunter and jacks waste more time closing the gap onto the site and he goes down for free. Doesn't get anything done. Now, with Rez going down, this retake becomes a lot more durable. There is already 20 seconds ticked on the bomb. So if Plopsky and Linus can waste more time, particularly Linus, who stood on top of that kit in Banana, I think Linus's job here is not to come through this smoke and try and play with Plopsky. I think he needs to play off of Plopsky. That is, I think, at this point, the highest percentage chance of winning the round. Now that Rez has gone down, before Rez goes down, I think Liners should come through the smoke and it should be all three try and fight together. But now that Rez has gone down, I think Liners has to play off of the fact that he is stood on top of the kit at the top of Banana. Hunter picks up Plopsky uh, very easily, just clears that angle out. Uh, good heads up play there from Hunter to kind of check that angle and again it's another reason I'd like Rez to have stayed on that angle I think it's less likely that Hunter clears that if Rez was killed on that angle but because Rez was killed towards Pillar it makes Hunter check dark now we're about to see the culmination of the retake Linus has a little spam through the smoke here uh, towards the bomb uh, he's got a, the right lineup I think he should know because the kit went down at Banana, that there's probably not a kit on Jackson Hunter. And I think he probably needs to leave it a little bit of time before he starts spamming. I understand that the CT is probably nowhere he is anyway. But honestly, I would get inside that smoke. It wasn't far off of fading, as you can see. I would have got in that smoke and played in it and played off of the advantage you get from the smoke fading. I think Liner's... I think I've got to be honest, I think Linus basically plays that in a way that gives him no chance of winning it. Um, it's not easy to win by any chance. It's definitely favoured for G2 Esports at that point when it's a 2v1, when that smoke is up. But I think the information was there. The fact that the kit went down in Banana, which means it's very, very... In fact, I would say 100% guaranteed that nobody's gonna, nobody else is going to have a kit. Like, no pro team is going to buy two kits on the pistol round. Now, I guess on the flip side, you could say maybe they didn't know the kit was down in Banana. That's totally feasible, totally plausible. But the information was there to be had. That's the end of that video, guys. Just a quick one. Really enjoyed that pistol strat from NIP and then really enjoyed that good retake from G2. I think NIP made some mistakes, but G2 played that retake very smoothly, very sensibly and gave themselves every chance of winning that 3v2. If you enjoyed, you know the drill. Like, favorite, subscribe, whatever you do on YouTube these days. Peace out, brothers and sisters.